Three, two, one. Hey y'all, welcome to another season of In The Green Room Podcast. We are officially in season three. I appreciate y'all so much for rocking with me through the first two seasons and we are here. We have arrived at yet another season of In The Green Room Podcast. I am Brittany Shanae, your favorite podcaster. If I'm not your favorite podcaster right now, I will be by the end of this episode. And as y'all can see, I am not here by myself. I am here with my girl, Jade Nova. Jade of all trades. Yes. Here you go, girl. Here you be, girl. Come on, season three, congratulations. Thank you so much. And congratulations to you. Thank you. You are killing it out here right now. Thank you. And I am just, I'm so happy, I'm so proud. I am so blessed to be in your presence. Oh, likewise, we're just out here reflecting each yes. other. So I am great. Mirrors, if you will. Period. So y'all know, as we always do, we start off every episode with the affirmation station. We got two sets of affirmation cards. Um, I'm not sure what the name of this one is, but this one is by one of my favorite makeup artists. Her name is Vanessa Myricks. Um, makeup artist uh, extraordinaire, but there are some really gifted messages in this deck. So yeah. I'm gonna shuffle them and you're gonna select what you are drawn to. Okay. So let's see where we go now. I will say that Everybody that pulls one of these cards is usually right on the money. Oh yeah, cards never lie. I listen. believe that. So I'm I'm all about this life. Listen, listen, and I can't wait to explore that. <laughs> all right, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Wow. Mm, straight to it. Ooh, come on. I hold it, I don't say it yet. You say it. Okay, I am led by my dreams, not pushed by my fears. That's Ashe, Ashe, Ooh, Ashe. Oh, that's a good one right No, here. that's a really good one. How, how, how does that one make you feel? It's kind of wild because I'm rereading um, The Four Agreements right now. My friend Andrea has a book club and it's interesting reading it for a second time because I think when I've read it the first time, I was just early in my healing yeah. journey and just early yeah. in that sort of discovery. It's yeah. kind of like the first book that yeah. a lot of people read yeah. when they're on that, that and the secret, right? Yeah. Like. So the chapter that we were just reading was talking about how our minds are fertile for seeds of fear. So that was literally the topic of conversation in our last book club and how, you know, people have manipulated and taken advantage of how we're so impressionable and moved by fear with a lot of religion and a lot of indoctrination. So, you know, I think that throughout my life, I had been more so led by fear, you know, the fear of what if, or, you know, the fear of failure. And so I'm in the season right now of really moving with love and moving with more intention. So right on the money. This is how the influence is. Right. This, right. This, <laughs> this, this, no, this is it. Yes, this I love is it. our card. No, that's that's one of my favorite cards in the entire deck. Good one. I did a, a photo shoot with uh, this talented group and I pulled some affirmations like a few days before that and the videographer used my voice and put it over the video of us filming and it was that affirmation. Oh, this, this is, is mm -hmm. All right, let's see what number two is. Ooh, let's see. Right there. Ooh. Okay, I don't know why I bark. <laughs> I'm, look, I meow and bark. Apparently, <laughs> I just be doing weird stuff. It's so okay. It's don't worry. So this one is, I am aware. When I pay attention to my surroundings, I can feel appreciation for everything. I see so much beauty in the world. Being aware means living in the present and fully experiencing my life in the here and now. I am aware. That's, I, that, I just said that that's, this morning. Ooh, that's I'm really present. Beautiful. Being present is so important because so mm -hmm. often we're thinking about what's gonna happen in the future, what happened in the past. What about right now? Mm -hmm. What about taking it in right now? Girl. And social media, right? Because oh, we're yes. there's so many distractions, and so a lot of even when we're experiencing moments, sometimes we're not even present in it because we're worried about capturing it for later, which is a beautiful thing yeah. too. But you know, I love this. I am aware. I am aware. And I am led by my dreams, not pushed by my fears. So these are your cards for the episode. I love it. And these are our affirmations for the week. So. Every day, if you're looking for a little bit of something to affirm yourself, revert back to this video 
Tell yourself that you are aware and you are led by your dreams, not pushed by your fears. Again, <laughs> that's what I don't know why they be doing it, but it, it, it brings it into focus. It that's takes it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm like, I don't know. I just, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So I want to welcome you guys to the first episode of season three. This is, I mean, this is crazy to me. Yeah. Like, this started as just a little idea. And now we are here three seasons in. I hope you guys stay tuned because I have the beast, Jade Nova, in the building. We will be right back. Sit tight. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Brittany Shanae. I just want to invite you all to In the Green Room Weekend 2024, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. We are doing this in the name of Connecting Creatives. We're gonna have live panel discussions, a live filming of In The Green Room podcast, the shop small businesses, and get all the content you need at our numerous content activations. We're doing it in the name of health, wellness, fitness, and of course, creativity. 420 weekend, right here. Get your tickets because they're on sale now. See y'all soon. Welcome back to this episode of In The Green Room Podcast. Like I said, I am not here by myself. I'm with my girl, Jade Nova. Been in this thing for a long time. A you mean in life, time. industry, or in this room? I mean, two out of three. Okay. You know? You've been in this room long. <laughs> but I, of course, I like to look up the accolades and the things and the who's of, of, uh, you know all of those things but I was doing my research and it kept going oh. and going <laughs> and going and going and I knew some of the things but not all of the things yeah. so of course we're going to get into those things we'll delve in there. but first I like to ask this question in I like for people to answer it in their own way because it is a loaded, loaded question. Oh, okay. Who is Jay Nova? Ooh. And you can answer that <laughs> however you feel inclined to answer wow. it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is also funny because the first book, I cannot remember the name of it, but the first book that we started reading in the book club is exploring like, who are you? And it was saying how uh, when a woman was asked this question, she's like, oh, well, my name is Diana and I'm 43 years old. And he's like, no, 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 no. Who are, are you? you? And yeah. she's like, oh, well, I'm from this place and I'm from this place. And then it just kept going and yeah. going and shedding all of these like external yeah. agreements to really figure out like who, who you actually are. Yeah. And it's a, it is a, a bit of a loaded it question, is. but I'm, I'm gonna try and find a, uh, <laughs> a simple way. Yeah. I am, I mean, in a creative space, I'm an artist, I'm a creative, I'm a storyteller, I'm a singer, I'm a writer, I'm an actress, I'm, yeah, a, a vibe curator when it comes to, to music and just art in general. Um, I'm a healer. Um, I am an empath. <laughs> I'm a Gemini. Hey girl. You know? Um, but my, I feel like my purpose on this earth is to help shift the collective consciousness into more healing, more accountability, more self-love. And yeah, that's, that's what I do in all of my art forms and all of my um, creative expressions is try and push that, push from partnership. My husband, Devin Johnson, who's over here, I can't help but say, hey, boo. Yeah, <laughs> he, he is such an incredible person and an incredible human to do life with. Yeah. But him and I have been together for 12 years and making music together and making art together. So another thing that we're both very passionate about is, is black love, yeah. is you yeah. know showing the importance of partnership and being mirrors for one another and kind of like, unlearning some of the programming i know we talked about this earlier just unlearning but you know just unlearning some of the programming of what we thought you know the romanticized version of partnership and sort of showing like hey it's, it's deeper than this yeah. love is an action word it's a choice and so even in our music you know we we talk a lot about those themes and so i'm all of those things and i'm black Period. <laughs> Period. I'm a Libra, air sign, you know, oh, connect, man, link up. Flowing. I, I, when I met you, because me and Jay worked on a project together that was an, 
incredible collaboration of so many like-minded individuals. Yes. It was it was such a good place to be in. But when I met you, I felt drawn to you. Um, and watching you, seeing what you do, hearing you speak about the things that you do, I identify so much with you. And I'm, I'm just so grateful that you came in to share this space with me so that not only I can get to know you better, but you know, the in the green room community can get to know you better because they're my road dogs. You know, they've been with me since day one. Um, and like you said, our algorithms are very similar. <laughs> so I'm sure they'll love you just as much as uh, I do. All right. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. How long you been? Uh, well, you, I know you lived in LA for a little bit. Yes. Let's talk about the journey from Cleveland to LA to Atlanta to, you know, okay. the, the, the roadmap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I moved to Atlanta first okay. in 2011. Um, that's where I met my husband, Devin. Okay. We met in a writing camp down there. And it's crazy because both of us wanted to live in LA, yeah. you know, so we were both in alignment there. So we were here until 2015. Okay. Then we moved to LA for four years. And then in 2019, we came back to Atlanta. I was hosting a morning show down here and that's what brought us back. Okay. So I'm actually glad we moved back when we did because it was literally right before quarantine and LA was shut shut oh, down yeah. like in a way like it has not been the same since honestly yeah. like yeah. it just kind of opened my eyes again what I was saying earlier being in quarantine and having that time to really do some more of the the deep work but just kind of realizing in some of the stuff yeah. that's going on oh 100 you know so I'm like wow everything shut down but down here in Atlanta it was just a lot more Club Atlanta. It was, it was a lot more open. So it was Club Atlanta. I was grateful to yeah. be here and, you know, so yeah, I've been here since. What, what did you like about LA that Atlanta doesn't have to offer? And I know they're, they're two completely yes. different ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. on things to do, people, environment. So what was your take on living there for four years? I love LA. Well, first of all, since we're in the green room, I'm just not going to hold you. I love the legal marijuana. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I love the <laughs> Hey, come on, he over there. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I, I think that it is absolutely insane yeah. that anyone should have the ability to tell me that I cannot have something that nah. is growing from God's nah, earth. Nah, that's real. And police it and monitor it. I think it's wild, especially when Atlanta, in Atlanta, they have this Delta 8 shit. It's trash. That it's so weird. Like it's doing the exact same thing that marijuana does, but it's not real, but it's legal. It's like make it make sense, but we know yeah. it's all about the other yeah. kind of green, yeah. right? So I did appreciate, you know, some of those freedoms in LA, I love the weather. Yeah. I love that it doesn't rain. You know, we're melanated beings, so the sun is like the vibe. Those so superpowers. I, you know what I'm saying? We get charged up. So I love the weather. Um, I actually went plant-based when I was out in Los yeah. Angeles. And it's so easy to do that it over is. there. I mean, it's honestly easy here too. Now. Mm -hmm. Now, now, there's so many black owned, <laughs> black and brown owned like vegan spots yep. down here. Yep. But at the time when I went vegan in LA, it was just easy to do. So I love that. So many green things, right? Yeah. Like all the green stuff, <laughs> the green leaves, the weed. Yeah. Um, the cost of living in LA is crazy though. Like it's unheard of. Yeah. Another reason why I'm glad we got yeah. out when we did yeah. because yeah, you can definitely see more of your green yeah. in Atlanta, yeah. you know, than, than what you can in LA. But a lot of people that I know who've lived in both places have more of a preference for Atlanta because they say, oh, the vibe in LA is weird. But I feel like you can kind of create whatever energy yeah. you are. And I feel like I found some of my closest friendships yeah. and relationships because when I moved to LA, um, that is when I was on that journey of unlearning mm -hmm. and rediscovering mm -hmm. myself and, you know, learning more about plant medicine yeah. and stuff like that. And so I had that awakening there. And so, in that I attracted so many like-minded people yeah. and so I'm grateful for my time in LA but you know I love Atlanta too yeah but it's blickety black over here. you said it's, bla it's blickety black I love that though too yeah. I love that there's so many black owned businesses here I love seeing so many black people thriving yeah. black families um and it's like a black Hollywood yeah. you know so yeah. there's still an industry here it's just Black. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You get the best of both worlds. You know, 
You um, do. I do. I love it here, though. But L.A. and Atlanta will always be places that I'll want to yeah. frequent. I feel like as an entertainer, at you need both Atlanta and L.A. Yeah. Um, and although, you know, people have their preferences. Now, I love Atlanta. I'll go to L.A. to visit. Yeah. But living there, I went up there. I was there for a week. By day five, I was homesick. And yeah. I had never experienced homesickness before. Ever, 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 ever. And I don't know what it is. I've been trying to figure out why that day five, like literally day five. Were you working out there? Yeah, but so I went to, the first two times I went out there, it was, they were quick trips. So I didn't get a chance to really experience the city. The last time I went out there, I was very conscious of my time. So I planned three to four days before work started to get out and explore, but <clears throat> it's interesting because you mentioned the community that you found, I was there by myself. Right. So I'm thinking that that probably played into why I was ready to go home. Absolutely. I didn't really have, I saw a few people that I knew, but it was like for a couple hours each and then they went back to their lives and I was there as a tourist. <laughs> I was living in Burbank, you know, taking you runs in the valley. In the morning. I was. But know? that's another thing too. Yeah. Like you wake up so much earlier because yes. you gain time. And I do love that about yeah. LA too. Yeah. It's I because you're that. way more productive. Yeah. Yeah, There's like an same. energy in that for yeah. sure. Do you miss home at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. What what was it like growing up in Cleveland? Ooh, you know what? And it's not that I don't love and appreciate where right. I'm from. Right. Right. You know, right. all the you know, I love you, Cleveland. I do 216, born and raised, playground. Period. You know. But again, the weather is a thing. Uh -huh. And it snowed. And when it snowed, it snowed like crazy. Yeah. And the weather is unpredictable in Cleveland. Um, yeah. And I think I, I mentioned this before uh, to my husband, but... It, it, the, the one thing I will say about the weather is that it gave me an opportunity to be more creative because yeah. you couldn't always go outside. You couldn't always ride your bike and play. You had to yeah. be inventive and creative. So Cleveland definitely cultivated my creativity because we had to figure stuff yeah. out when we couldn't play, right? So yeah, my imagination was born there. Uh, you know, that's my roots, but yeah, I don't, there's really nothing yep. there yep. for me anymore. That's how I feel about Augusta. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, Some appreciate no sense, it. You know, you know. Uh, so speaking of growing up there, what did you want to be growing up? You had so much time to go to cultivate an expansive imagination, I can imagine. So was there one thing or were there many things that you wanted to be growing up? I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a Disney princess. <laughs> I, I mean, I come on. See it's, that. it's the era of... <laughs> Yeah, I, I really did. I loved, like, I would get the little CDs and the cassettes with the instrumentals uh -huh. and sing all of the, you know, Disney songs. Yeah. But I knew early on I wanted to sing. Yeah. I, it, it, I, I came out the womb singing, yeah. and I loved that energy shift and people's reactions yeah. to me expressing myself in that way. And yeah. so, yeah, that's, I've literally wanted to do this since I was a little girl. Ain't that a beautiful thing? Like, getting to live your dream? No, I don't. I don't take it for granted. I don't. I don't. And a lot of people, I, I, I have moments where I literally have to, I don't pinch myself because I, you know, I'll be wearing these claws, but, um, but I have moments where it's like a shock of reality. Like, girl, you are really living your, you get to do what you love to do every day and everybody isn't blessed with that opportunity. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so grateful. Like, I'm so grateful. Girl, me too, yeah. me too. And it gives us the freedom to learn yep. and to grow and to expand and to network yep. and create. Like, that's that's a blessing. And I think it's, it's by design <laughs> that they keep us trapped in this rat yeah. race of cubicles and even elementary schools and no windows and that sort of yeah. pipeline into just working for somebody else. Like, it is definitely by design that you know, they want to keep us yeah. subordinate. Yeah. They want to keep us boxed in. So I'm truly grateful to be a creative because, whew. Yeah. But I guess that's sort of a double-edged sword too because once you know, then you're like, but there's really not much yeah. we can do yeah. about it. So it's crazy. And then you just want everybody to have that awakening and that realization, but you realize that's not everybody's journey. No. No. But grateful to connect with the people who do vibe that way. 100%. Yeah. 
did you um where did you sing most when you were growing up was it in school was it in church was it Definitely school, did all the little talent shows. Um, my father, he was in a rock band when he was younger. Wow. So he plays guitar and we would go around and perform at nursing homes and stuff like that. He would write songs. Get all the, all the audiences. You know what I mean? All the demographics. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, nursing homes. I, I didn't have the typical like grow up in the church story that a lot of my peers have. And it's really mainly because I grew up in a really interesting circumstance. Like my parents, they got married really young. They were like 17 okay. and 19 when they got married. So we were sort of on that grow up journey yeah. with them. Yeah. And so they experimented with a lot of different, uh, not necessarily religions, but more so places to worship. Yeah. Um, but a lot of white churches mm. where the music was not a yeah. factor. It was, yeah. you know, like yeah. real. Ugh. So yeah. the music, uh, like I, I discovered like the gospel artists like Kim Burrell mm. and Ty Tribb so much later yeah. in life. And it blew my mind because yeah. the closest thing I had to it was Brandy yeah. and, you know, the vocalists yeah. of the 90s yeah. who emulated that. But I would think like, like, oh, that's so unique. Yeah. Not knowing that yeah, it, it from. came yeah. from church. Whitney Houston, yeah. you know, I just thought that there were only a select group of people who, you know, expressed themselves that way. But truly, it was just the roots of having church. So, yes, church wasn't um, my story until a little bit later in life. But yeah, mainly music. Um, I'm sorry, school and performing at nursing homes and just performing at home. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. Do you have siblings? I do. I have two older sisters, oh, which is I am the baby. I'm the baby too. You are. Yeah. Of how many? Three. It's three of us. Really? And you have brothers. I, I have a brother and a sister. Oh, nice. Yeah. You got the best of both worlds. <laughs> I always wanted a brother. I wanted to see what that would be like. Aggressive. But that kind. Of, I feel like that gives you that balance because there was so much feminine energy, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. growing up. So yeah, it would have been nice to have that balance and someone to toughen me up a little bit. Yeah, cause my brother is definitely my best friend and mm -hmm. I- <laughs> What's the age difference? 10 years. Oh, nice. But he, I remember like one vivid memory. He was with his friends, they came home from school. He had one pant leg hiked up and the other one down. Like he was like, you want to, yeah. He was like, you want to walk to the store with me? I'm like, yeah. And I put my pants on and I lifted my one leg and I was, was walking down the street like best friends. But it, it did give, but me and my sister used to, she's the middle child. Mm -hmm. So we used to. Them middle children, what is that? Uh, they got a complex. I love you, Carrie. That's my middle sister. But yeah, they definitely, yeah, it's the thing with middle children. Yeah, they, they special. But being the youngest, I think that also gives us a natural entertaining yep. vibe about us yep. because we're always trying to make our big siblings laugh yeah. and keep them entertained. Yeah. So I'm grateful to be the baby. Yeah. They still look at you like you're the baby though? Like of they course. call you the baby? Uh, yeah, my I'm 33 now, and if me and my brother are in a situation where we're meeting somebody, well, I'm meeting somebody that he already, this is my baby sister, uh, yeah. baby. Baby. The emphasis on the baby, and baby I'm like, I'm baby. over here, whole big grown adult, but you know, love them the same. But do you have any nieces and nephews? Oh my goodness, yes. Both my sisters just didn't stop. Um, so my middle Same. sister, she has six children okay. and my oldest sister has three. Okay. So yes, I have nine. We so are so similar. That's, is it the same? My sister has four. My brother has six. Oh, my brother's oldest just turned, to, how old am I, 33? My brother's oldest just turned 30, 29 yesterday. Oh, wow. And his youngest is nine months. See, yep, my sister, her oldest is gonna be 21 this year and her youngest just turned two. So, yep. Covered That's crazy. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, no, I I enjoy, we pretty, the oldest of the nieces and nephews, we pretty much grew up together. Though. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I Cause you're closer in age with your nephew than, than your sister. Cause you said your brother is 10 years. Equal. Yeah, my sister, me and my sister are four years. Me and my nephew are four years. Oh, so got you, got yeah. you, mm -hmm. yeah. He's in the Navy. It's, I mean, they, it's so, it's crazy because it's, genes are so funny because they bounce around. Now my brother, all of his kids, except for the baby, they look like somebody else in the family. Exactly like somebody else in the family. But the baby is him. Like 
face, oh, your brother? head shape. Yes. She looks exactly like my brother. Now, my sister's kids, all of them look exactly like her. Like, and my niece, the, she, she lives in Atlanta. We are almost identical. I think I saw something that you posted and I we was like- We have the same- Yeah, y'all got the same face. face. She's into makeup. She's in like all things creative. She locked her hair when I had my locks. Like it was, it's, it's, it's funny. It's so funny. Now you spoke about not growing up in the church really, but you know, visiting where did, because you are a very spiritual being and oh. uh, you know, I love that you radiate like you in, I love that about you. Where did this, I don't want to say where did you discover it, but where did you find yourself leaning more into your spirituality and what made you want to lean more into that? Okay. Well, mm, that's a really good <laughs> question. I would say when I moved to Los Angeles, um, that is when I had my awakening yeah. with, with everything, my spirituality, with my health, with my diet, with just so many things I was in that process of unlearning. And in doing just more research and realizing like all of the messaging and the indoctrination that we were given, even though I wasn't like, I didn't have a traditional like black church home in my early days, I still, was, I'm not gonna say victim, that sounds horrible, <laughs> but I, <laughs> no shade, but I still um, shrunk myself from a lot of the narratives and the fear, like we were talking about earlier, like our mind is so fertile for, for fear. So I honestly got very anxious as a kid from this fear of burning in hell from, and truthfully, I ain't gonna hold you. Cause I've been to black churches like in my later teenage years, but in my early years when I was going to these um, white churches, <laughs> um, it was even more culty like than yeah. some of the things, you know, because there was no music that was like kind of, right. you know, at least to have that sort of exchange. It, like you, you, it was very clear. There was nothing cloaking it in chords, right? So it was just, <laughs> I'm just saying. There was this play that they used to, to play, um, I'm sorry, a musical that they used to put on annually and it was called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames, okay? And I found it like recently and I looked at it and my, my jaw dropped because it was like the clearest propaganda that I had ever yeah. seen, but it scared me so much. Like I didn't feel like I was participating in my spirituality because it was like a choice. I felt like I was forced because if not, I was gonna burn and this devil like they it was scary like the imaging they had the flashing lights and he would come out and he had raw like this scary ass voice and if you but if you you know you put gave asked Jesus into your heart then you know the Christ-like character came out and he had the lights and it was bright and beautiful and so yeah I was a very very anxious kid yeah. from that fear I mean to the point where I would pray constantly and I still remember the prayer because I said it so much it was like Jesus please be in my heart in case I die right now or any other time like it was like this yeah. same thing I'm like just in case I mess up because I knew even then as a kid like we're gonna fall short right yeah. but just in case can I get a contingency yeah. like but it was just really so much fear yeah. Yeah. from that so just the more to answer your question mm -hmm. where I discovered my spirituality and, and kind of came into it was honestly doing more research into the things that I had learned and looking at it with a more open mind. Yeah. And um, yeah, kind of like the car said, not really allowing fear yeah. to be the thing that moved me. More so, what do I feel led? Yeah. How do I feel led to express myself? What feels authentic for me? What feels like a choice yeah. for me? And so, yeah, that time in Los Angeles really gave me the freedom to do that. And I, I ran into more like-minded people who affirmed that because Atlanta is a bit of a Bible belt. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is, <laughs> it is. And so it's it was very difficult when I was on that journey of sort of unlearning 
to find people to touch and agree. Yep. It was like, you can't say those things out loud. You can't ask questions, but it's like, but well, why can't yep. I ask questions? Because yep. even in Bible school as a kid, I would ask like, okay, so who, who made God then? Or what is this? And they would give you these abstract. I remember um, I asked the Bible study teacher like, where did God come from? And he said, I want you to go home today and I want you to look up John 1. I think he said it was John 1, 1. And I remember being so excited, like, oh my God, I'm about to find the answer. And I opened it and it was just like, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And I'm like, what in the Dr. Seuss? Like, I don't understand. Like, I just need, I want a straight answer. Like, I just, <laughs> you know? And so like those sorts of things yeah. that just created confusion and not, and, and, and that sort of dismissive, I'm not really going to answer this uh -huh. or kind of chastising you for asking these questions yeah. around other kids. Like, yeah. So I wanted to be able to exist in spaces where I could be inquisitive because yeah. I have such a curious mind. Yeah. And I need things that feel good and not forced upon me. So yeah, LA, man, it, it gave me that freedom and I felt affirmed in other people who were also on that journey. And maybe it wasn't even LA specific because I think it was just this awakening that yeah. happened kind of everywhere. Yeah. A lot of people were starting to just kind of ask why a little bit more and be more intentional with how they uh, spent their time and their self-care and their healing and their spirituality. And then even with going plant-based, I feel like a lot of it is so holistic. You know, once you start to unlearn one thing, everything else you start to question like, well, why do we do this? And why is this here? And asking why has been like my spiritual foundation really. Do you feel like, um Having those experiences in those churches, do you feel like initially when you started your enlightenment journey, did you feel like there was a little bit of resentment? Mm. Um, not really. Okay. I mean, cause I understand, <laughs> like I get it. And I also know that culturally there is this attachment to the church in, in the traditional sense of like, you know, we we have this thing to look forward to in our afterlife. And if we do right, and you know, it, church was a place for, and still is for many people to just kind of release, yeah. you know, when they're running around the church and they're singing and they're expressing themselves in that way. Like I understand like why it is so sacred for many people. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have any resentment toward it, but yeah, like I said, everyone's kind of in their own, on their own journey yeah. with it. So I'm not like on a soapbox to try and like yeah. open everyone's minds, but I do get it. Yeah. And I, I don't fault them for doing and carrying out what they were taught to do. Yeah. Cause that's literally how most people move. No one questions anything. <laughs> really? It's it's an interesting space to be in when you become enlightened. Mm -hmm because you become so sensitive to all of the ignorance that people have. And it's, you know, it's not ignorant, to, sometimes it's ignorant to a fault, but a lot of times people are just doing what they've been taught and they don't know anything other than that. And it's a special place to be in. I feel like these last past two, two and a half years, I went through a breakup and I ended up moving into a space by myself. And I realized that, it, which is why your album, Girl. Hey. <laughs> and we gonna get into that, but I cried some big tears, um, good big tears, because I realized that all of it was on purpose. And I knew it, but it's just reassurance. But moving out of a space of being attached to somebody for 10 years. Um, I realized, and I thought I knew myself, but what was that, uh, MTV, you think you know, but you, you have, have no, no idea. idea. Yeah, that was the space that I was in when I moved into a house by myself. And I had a the, the last set from the last two seasons, that room, big windows, Plants, and I would just go in there and sit sometimes and just cry and release and write. And But I began to unlearn and I began to figure out and I started to really look at myself in the mirror. 
because what I was realizing was I was looking at my reflection, but I wasn't looking at me. You know what I'm saying? And it's, you know, we go by mirrors all the time. Okay, you look, okay, but I think it was, it is, I think it was Tabitha Brown. She was on a panel and it was like Essence Fest or something like that. But she said, a lady asked her a question about, it was something about looking at herself in the mirror and knowing herself and she looked at herself in the mirror and she realized that she didn't know the person that she was looking at. And it made her cry, it made her sad. Like, and it's so many people that are just mindlessly walking through life in that way and they have no idea that they are mindlessly walking through. So I, I feel so happy to be in the space and to now be able to find community and because it's naturally going to happen when you start doing the work the people that are doing the work y'all gonna come together oh, and, absolutely you know la 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 hold hands and all of that stuff we're gonna have some good fun yeah um but it's a yeah it's, it's a good space to be in and I'm, I'm just so grateful for it and i i really wish that more people would get into that space and you know i just i find it that you know you can't force anybody no to to <laughs> want to grow but you just live as open and be as authentic as you can in your own experience and people will be drawn yes, to that it's, life it's a scary thing yeah. because then you have to once you pull that little thread out you're afraid of everything that's gonna unravel and so i think that people just find more comfort in not like even if it isn't even if this is there might be a better way there's too much work involved to have to rewire and reprogram myself so like you said they're walking around being a version of themselves that's reflective of how the world expects them yeah. to show up and people wonder why they feel that heaviness and where it comes from but it's like yeah like you said who are you like for real without all the agreements and the things that people tell you you should show up as especially yeah i mean black women like even that part like there's an expectation for you to vote a certain way there's yeah. an expectation for you to dress a certain yeah. way talk a certain way worship a certain way eat a certain way yeah. you know yeah it's just it's sometimes we are not sometimes we are sort of a slave to these titles and these things that we had no control over and it i hate how much it puts us in a box um yeah but i think more people are doing the work more people are openly doing the work yeah. because like you said atlanta being in the bible belt people where I mean, there was a sense of, it was a scariness. Like you, you live in how you live in and everybody else, all 10, 20 people around you are in the church. You know what I'm saying? And you want to be free and you want to express yourself, but then here they are condemning you for just being free and living your life in your true light. You know what I'm saying? What they're, but it's interesting because relationships are reflections yeah. is they're just deflecting yeah. the fear that they have because they want to be free they want to be free truly but they don't know how to or they are scared to mm -hmm. you're and triggering them yes. and living in your truth yes. yeah people i've noticed that in all of those things yeah. like even in being plant-based like i'm not again I, I i'm passionate about these things but I've never been one who's like, oh, what you got on your plate? Yeah, oh, yeah. what you eating that? I don't know why I would sound like a slave doing it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've never been like yeah. just like policing people. I'm just living by example. And if you, you know, people usually will ask yeah. and get inquisitive, but I've noticed that there are people around me who are close, who are not vegan, who feel this conviction, even though I didn't say didn't anything. Say nothing. They're like, I think you think that you're better than me. Uh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe you're just trying to tell me in your way that you think that I am because you feel this pull to want to do something, but you know that it takes a lot of work. Again, yeah. that is the theme. Like, I, all of these things are not different from one another. Yeah. 
it yeah. all triggers that same response of like, I kind of want to do what you're doing, but I know that I don't feel like doing it. So I'm going to like feel angry or project, like you said, that, uh, that um, resentment yeah. onto people. And it's like, it's wild. Yeah. People, I, I've been doing a lot of reading in these past few years. And it's, it's like every step I take, I find a book, I read that book, and it's like, yeah, Brittany, you're doing exactly what you need to do. And this is how people are gonna react to blah, 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 blah. The other day, prime example, I posted something on Twitter, just talking, just talking. And I was like, literally, the, the more people that see you and know you, the more fame you get, yeah. it's like you can't even be funny because people gonna be offended by you being funny. Like, come on, but I said something, what did you say? I, Can you tell I, me? I said, I said, oh, y'all, uh, y'all be using the hell out of them filters. Something like I, it's, it was something like that. And I'm scrolling down. Then now this was not for anybody, right? But I'm scrolling down and then I see somebody. It was a direct response to, I'm not going to say what the, but I know it was a direct response. And I was like, I wasn't even talking about you, but a hit dog will up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's just, it's crazy. But I was reading this book called, I'm reading this book called uh, Thought Access by Adil Ahmed and the chapter that I had just gotten done reading said the exact thing. Like the more enlightened you become, the more in touch with yourself you become, your light is going to aggravate the hell out of people. Yes, it will. Like you just existing, you breathing, you being a vegan, you minding your business, eating your own damn And meal. look, I was just telling somebody about, actually on my husband's podcast, I was talking about this, but like, that same response to the light or to people doing things differently, it's so ironic that a lot of people who identify as Christian, if they lived at that time when he was existing as that light, would not have been able to receive it. No. And it's such an no. interesting thing. If no. he if he came back right now, they'd be like, mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> they would yes, decide I ain't let out of So yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. Man. It is. Yeah, it's, it's, Spiritual journey, healing, enlightenment, all of being you, just being authentically 100% you, it just, it comes with a list of all of these things. And you know, you just have to be ready. You gotta be ready. Cause I, that's when the anxiety had come up for me when I wasn't ready. Because I remember after coming back to Atlanta, um, after getting all this information, and like I said, being in the comfort of people who were more like-minded, so I didn't really have to explain myself. Yeah, yeah. But when you do things differently, people want explanations. Yeah. If you're vegan, well, where do you get your protein from? <laughs> if, you're, if you're not a Christian, well, what is your moral compass? Yeah. So it's like, it comes with so many questions, more questions than they're willing to ask of themselves and why they do things that they do. And at the time I moved back, which is crazy, I was doing a morning show, which is me having to express myself and my opinion and be authentic. And I wasn't ready to be out there in the world yet. So it gave me so much anxiety and it put me really in a, in a bit of a depression because I knew that I had changed, but I didn't know how to articulate it. And I didn't know the why like that. And so, yeah, that is a rough space to be in when the world is questioning why you're different and you don't really know why yet. Yeah, you gotta do the work. Oh, girl, uh, you. Yeah, you gotta make me some of these. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. Okay, you know, but. So let's talk about this fantastic. I mean, listen. Not too high in it. Let breathe. it breathe. Let it breathe. <laughs> right in the middle. Yeah, you go zoom. <laughs> but listen, let me tell you something. So I listened to your album for the first time the night that it dropped, right? So I'm in here I'm because I'm preparing for In the Green Room weekend 
and I'm creating like marketing and I'm like, let me put my beats in and I'm gonna just like, I literally was immersed into your world. And I think that this project, Where Have I Been, is such a beautiful body of work. I, and you know, I text you like, girl, like, first of all, first of all, were you in my brain when you were writing these songs? But I think that you being so open and honest about your experience in love and healing and growing up the way that you grew up, the, the lack of what you did receive. I think that it's so beautiful that you decided to do that and be open with people. Can we talk about the choices that you made? Why did you decide to be as open and vulnerable with this project? Um, were you scared? Did you have anxiety? Did like, let's talk about it. Sure, sure. And thank you so much. First of all, I'm so grateful that you listened and took the time <laughs> to, like you said, immerse yourself into it. Cause I mean, outside of the themes, the way that the album is set up is meant to be listened to from beginning to end on the first listen. Cause it is like a storytelling musical, you know, merged with R&B music. And so again, like I mentioned before, I am a storyteller. So that part of it was very easy for me to do something I've always wanted to do and have played around with in past projects before and some that haven't seen the light of day, but you know, I knew that that was always a way that I wanted to express myself. Um, so that part of it was easy. Um, and I think, I mean, a lot of most artists, whether they're whatever medium they're making art in, they pull from life. So, you know, I'm definitely not doing anything different in, in going home first and telling my story because that's, you know, the thing that I can relate to the most. I was very surprised though at how many people related to that story. So if y'all don't know the story, let me tell you. <laughs> So Where Have I Been is a love language origin story. That's how I look at it yeah. um, and how words of affirmation came to be my love language. And like you said, I went back into my childhood, my relationship with my dad, who I love very deeply. But and again, this might be a generational thing because so many people since have come to me and told me they have similar stories. But my dad was not able to say I love you. He wasn't able to affirm me and say you're beautiful. A lot of it was more so deflecting with humor yeah. which again yeah. i gained my self uh, um my sense of humor yeah. but kind of lost my sense of self at yeah. the same time yeah. because hu humor became a defense mechanism in a way that we sort of expressed ourselves yeah. in in my in my home but you know not having that verbal affirmation from my father made me look for it in other relationships and then think that hearing it was enough and that, oh my goodness, if this if this person can tell me they love me and my dad can't, then this really must mean that he loves me because he's saying it. Or if he's telling me I'm pretty, then whoa, he really must fuck with me because my dad can't even see himself in me to tell me and affirm me that way. So I would create these relationships and these bonds with people that were just rooted in such a manipulative yeah. space because the power of words are, I mean, words are spells. Yeah and they're powerful and when someone can sense that you have a very gullible energy that can be used to manipulate you and so that's sort of the journey that i'm going on in this project is you know starting with that realization of, of how my love language came to be how it affected my relationships with other people and then ultimately learning how to use the power of words to affirm myself and that's the journey of the story but I, I love, and I have to talk about this cast of people though, on oh, this because let's talk about it. <laughs> I'm so Baby. again, it's it's also a testament to the power of words. Yes. Because I would say my anxiety wasn't as much about how it would be received as much as contacting these amazing people to be a part of the project. I have had so much anxiety and taking up space in that way in the past, and I don't know why I've limited myself and, and you know, dimmed myself to the point where I didn't think that I could ask someone to be a part. Girl, you are preaching to me right now! <laughs> 
look, and we do it all the time. Like we 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 cap ourselves off at our fear. Yes. This hard, girl. I'm gonna keep going back to it now <laughs> because we do. And so I'm like, you know what? I told Devin. I was like, babe, like, okay, I made my short list. And he's always, he is the king of words of affirmation because he knows that's how I love to be loved and, and affirmed. And so like his confidence in me, like just hit the worst, the worst thing they can say is no, you know? And what does that do? Then you move on and he makes it sound so simple, but I'm just like terrified inside. But I made my short list and every single person that I reached out to was like, not only wanted to do it, but was gracious and like excited to do it. So Tabitha Brown plays my therapist because who better to be a therapist right. than Tabitha Brown? Yeah, you know, America's sad. auntie, right. right? Like, come on, plant-based got it. So Tabitha Brown, Wayne Brady plays my father, which is perfect because he has that comedy. And, you know, I knew him uh, when I was living in Los Angeles. He did a workshop, like a, a comedy pilot, and I met him and um, just worked with him in that capacity. But yeah, he, he definitely personified the energy of my father yeah. in that humor deflection yeah. and, you know, but lightheartedness and yeah. loving energy, just not knowing how to express it. Leslie Autumn Jr., girl, oh my goodness, let me tell you. If y'all don't know who this incredible black man is, Leslie Odom Jr. was in the original cast of Hamilton, yeah. Tony winning, yeah. just incredible actor. And he plays my boyfriend, Miles. And he's sort of a culmination of many different relationships. He's not just one guy from my past. He represents a lot. And I named him Miles because I'm like, that's the extent that I would go <laughs> to, to, you know, pe please other people. Uh -huh. So, you know. And then Tony Baker, incredible yeah. comedian, he plays my boss, Fred, and Gail Bean from Snowfall and Pea Valley. She is an incredible actress. She plays my best friend. Yeah. I'm trying to think, am I missing anybody? Yes, Wayne. Oh, t um, Kenyon Dixon um, has a, um, a feature on the project, as well as Tank from Tank and the Bangas. So, yes, it is my mind was blown. Cast it beautifully, <laughs> perfectly. Oh man. Every person, every voice, every, like I can tell that if you were so diligent mm -hmm. in the creation of the, like I am, I am really blown away. The, when I was listening to, I sent it to her, like I sent it to my best friend. I sent it, I was like, listen, now she says you need to listen to it from start to finish the first time, then go back in your favorites. Yeah. Like, but I I'm, mean. Because you're not gonna watch a television show, right? right and skip episodes yep. to episodes. And that's the, the thing is like, we will binge yep. something. And even if it's mindless, and even if by episode five, we know this shit is trash, but yep. we're like, well, maybe we'll the next going. episode. Yeah. Like if you guys can do that, yeah. It's an hour and four minutes and it's giving you a screen break and it's allowing you to tap into your creativity, uh -huh. how we used to imagine things. Yes. I mean, at least I know as a girl and yeah. I would read as a kid, I saw the characters and, mm -hmm. and Devin, um, I keep saying my husband in case y'all forget, <laughs> but I think Devin, Devin Johnson, my husband. <laughs> He has been in film scoring, composing. Uh -huh. And so this album was a way for us to really tap into all the yeah. things that bring us joy because, you know, even hearing the plates shuffling yeah. or the birds, like he created a world with me that allows you to just escape and just, like you said, immerse is the perfect word because that was the intention. Like, why not take a second and just be present? Yes like the garbage yes, all about being present no seriously because yeah it's just we're always so distracted and uh, yeah and in our forms of entertainment involve screen yep. screen so yep. my intention was to not have it be a visual album but visuals through sound yep. and just play on the power of our strengths and like i mentioned Devin's strengths of just being able to create a world with just sound alone you know i think that's something that has been missing we've been so What's the word? Captivated yeah. by video and it's always just a sex person. Well, when the visuals coming, girl, you know, or you hear a Beyonce song, you're like, oh, I can't wait. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But like they said in the 80s, video killed a radio star. Mm -hmm. And it has created a um, an interesting, I think also, <laughs> well, that's not, I ain't even gonna go there, girl. But 
Video definitely changed the way that we, our expectations of music as well. Because when you just listened, you didn't care. Like them album covers would be a damn plant. Yep. You didn't know who was singing, yep. but visuals have tainted the art mm -hmm. of music in some ways because you're more concerned about seeing things yep. when it's supposed to be an audio yeah. experience. So yeah, I just wanted to take it back to the, the pure, yeah form of how we should consume music, which is with your ears. 100%. And I think the album is being so well received because that place was missing. Mm. It's been missing. Mm. And when you are coming in and feeling a void that needs to be filled, it's going to be received. Mm. Like, and like, I can appreciate, I, I told you when we worked on um, the project that we worked on, I was like, see, you you be doing stuff, like musically, you be doing stuff and oh, I be liking what yeah. you be doing. And the musical, like I'm a musical theater girl. I'm a R&B girl. I'm a soul girl. I'm, a, I'm all these things. So when like, I literally, I can't remember which song came on, but I'm I'm trying to just listen and but I was like <laughs> and I I laid my head back because you literally get sucked into this world and again, although you don't have visuals in your face, you're literally following along this journey. I had the album playing this morning in my apartment and uh one of my roommate's friends is down there doing some sewing and he hadn't heard the album yet so i'm getting ready and i'm playing it and the, one of the the conversation that you had with the first boyfriend when y'all got in a car yes. and when he said i love you the friend is downstairs. He was like, he lying. I was like, exactly, but I'm like, exactly. Yeah. That's the type of, and when I listen to it the first time, I'm talking back like, dang. Girl, you know how many people sent me little boxing hands with the word Miles? Like, I'm real? like, y'all don't gotta fight Miles. He was on his healing journey too. And and like I said on the project, I attracted him into my yeah, life. Yeah, 100%. For a reason. 100%. Because we are gonna keep seeing those same lessons oh, repeat yes. until we learn it and then we move on. They yes. will show up in multiple different people, yes. even your kids. Yes. 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 And I, it's, I, the, the, you speaking about, you know, your dad not being able to say, I love you. It, like I said, I cried on the first listen. I cried this morning listening to it, especially on Affirm Me. But my mom, like I know my mama loved me. I, I know how close we are, but I didn't hear you look so cute. You look beautiful. I love you. And I realized that that showed up in literally every single one of my relationships. And I didn't realize that until that time that I had when I moved in to the house by myself and I'm doing all of this. So it was, it's, it's just so refreshing. I could keep talking on and on and on and on and on <laughs> about this girl. album, <laughs> but like, it, no, for real. Like it's, but it's, it's just so refreshing to hear it not only being spoken about, but done in such a creative and artistic way where I feel like more people will be able to receive it because a lot of times people shut down when people are just talking about something. Yes, ooh, that's the, and that is, I'm so glad you said that because that is why I am very intentional um, about the messaging that I do put out and what I allow myself and my family to consume because it's literally their mantras, yep. songs. Like yep. you repeat it all yes. the time. And I was just having this conversation with Devin because we were talking about certain spaces um, that we've been in where we've noticed people playing like music that's divisive and violent yep. and crazy. And then we'll be looking around, but we'll be the only ones in the room who are like, should we be playing it while yeah. these kids here? But they're so immune yep. to it because it's so normal. Yep. And it's like, yo, music is powerful. Yeah. It is a powerful tool and it will, it can literally shape the way that you show up in the world because you're subconsciously like, this is becoming a part of your yeah. DNA. Yeah.
Girl, music is powerful. Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm just, I'm so glad. Again, I'm so glad you released this project. Now, I know that a lot of the songs that are on the album, you released them previously on uh, EP. And so how did you feel with bringing it all together for an album and then bringing in the extra voices, bringing in the extra, like, how was this journey? Because, I mean, you've been piecing it together for it seems like years now. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. And honestly, where have I been was the was the plan all along. Okay. And I think because it was such a process mm -hmm. of even collecting the people to be a part of yeah. it, that I wanted, I hadn't put out a full project since 2020. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to wait like four years between yeah. putting it out. So I'm like, okay, let's just collect some of these songs. So the project itself was already visualized. It's just, I needed to just put something out in, you know, in the meantime. So we put out the EP Moon and Pisces and we did a tour from that project. And so, yeah, it, um, it was ultimately always going to be where have I been, but it was just like giving you a little appetite, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed. I I enjoy. I enjoyed. I I am very proud of you, and I am so happy that my ears got a chance to hear all of these things. Now I was um, watching. I, you posted a clip. You were on. I can't remember which podcast it was, but you were speaking about. Um, you know going through all of these different accomplishments and not taking the time to savor the accomplishments because let me let me let me just talk about a few things yes. she's been a voice for a character on yeah no no no, no, no uh -uh. but she's been a voice for a character on the simpsons yeah you open up for a savage x fenty show you how many tours have you been on Oh, as an artist or yes. a background singer? Well, as an, well, I mean, as, a, as an artist. As an artist, I opened up for Tiana Taylor's Keep That Same Energy Tour, and then I headlined two of my own. Period. Three tours. You were a background singer. Yes. I mean, your resume is extremely extensive. Do you or have you found a way to take in all of your wins when you are winning or do you still find that kind of hard to, you know, take in? And when, especially when you're moving around a lot, you're doing a lot of things. I know that it's hard to take those moments. Yeah, no, it is. And I'm working on doing better. Um, and that was the clip you're talking about. Um, it was love, love and conversations. It's like a, uh, not really a podcast, but just conversations that Devin and I do for my Patreon. Okay. So basically we're talking about our, the different songs that we've created and then we just have stories okay. around them. So yeah, I do struggle with taking that time. Cause it's like, you know, you're already ready to move on yeah. to the next thing. And also, because a lot of what I do are things that haven't necessarily been done yet in the traditional sense. So like being an independent artist and building a following that way. And then, you know, Devin and I have this company, Let There Be Art, and we're, you know, helping independent artists navigate their journey. Like all of these sorts of things that we do are uh, sort of blueprints yeah. for things that haven't been done, even yeah. coming from social media. So a lot of times, even my family, they don't always understand what it is that I do. And I think that in about 20 years, they'll look <laughs> back and be like, oh, that's because y'all were the first ones to do that yeah. shit. Or, you know, of that yeah. group, of this yeah. generation who's yeah. doing things differently. So like, if I'm not on the radio versus Spotify, or if I'm not on a major network versus a YouTube thing yeah. that I've created, or, you know, it's like some of the things that have gotten glorified from people. And I know they are just doing the best that they can and trying to show up for me and support however they can. But a lot of it is because it's like, they're more impressed when I was singing background for other people. It's like, okay, cause I can attach this to someone that somebody yeah. knows. So it's like, oh, you sang background for Rihanna. But I'm like, mom, but, you know, I sold out yeah. the House of Blues on my own. I know it's smaller, but that's a bigger deal for me because that is something that I built myself. Yeah. And so, you know, I think a lot of that had come in the past of me not really affirming my wins myself is because I didn't look at them as wins because yeah. it didn't look 
like that to the people on the outside and didn't get the same praise that doing the Simpsons yeah. did versus me making my own cartoon, yeah. you know, yeah. like, so I've had to learn or sort of unlearn or just really understand yeah. like where that comes from. Yeah. And so in that being able to take a second to be like, okay, bitch, you built a following of millions yeah. of people on your own and you've built this thing without having a blueprint to follow. Yeah. Like that's powerful. So really being able to do this and be on this journey with Devin has given me a built in sort of us kind of just affirming each other and be like, dude, you done did this thing. Like you need to celebrate, you know? So yeah, I think we do a good job now of really acknowledging that and making sure we take that time to celebrate our wins for sure. I'm glad because you are that girl. You really are like you when you say Jade of all trades, like I like I said, I was scrolling and just finding more and more and more and more. I mean, and... likewise, girl. <laughs> Cause, come on. And you know, so this is a, a question stemming from that. Did you ever feel like you couldn't do it all or that it was too much to do it all? Because I know that so last year with the strikes happening i was primarily working as a makeup artist in tv and film and what happened from that was i kind of pushed a lot of the things that i was doing to the side so when the strikes happened i think that was god like all right girl here go your time go ahead and do your things but I found myself getting a little overwhelmed because I do do so many things. Um, and I felt like sometimes I would have to sacrifice some of those things. Do you identify with that? Oh, absolutely. I, I totally relate to that. And I mean, luckily, I think, I think that I'm starting to learn how they all work together. Yeah. Like, I think from the outside looking in, and, and we used to be a, a, an entertainment industry that had multi hyphenates all the time. You know, that was celebrated, that was expected. And again, I think that coming back to the visual element of things yeah. has kind of ruined it because now, and then even social media, like with TikTok and stuff like that, like being able to just pick someone and say like, okay, I don't really, need to do all these different things. I just want to do what you tell me to yeah. do. And then being a vessel and not, and being an, an empty, I'm sorry, sort of a blank canvas yeah. without having all these things that you want to do is more appealing sometimes yeah. in the mainstream because you can just keep microwaving it out, you know? And so in that, there was this false reality of thinking that I couldn't do it all because it seems like the people who were more niche or just focused on yeah. doing one thing was more successful. But as quickly as they come, they also go. And I think just like you would do in stocks or anything else, you diversify that portfolio <laughs> because, and the great thing is in you being a multi-hyphenate, when the strike happened, you were able to tap into yeah. something else because imagine if your livelihood or your creativity was contingent upon one thing, like, yeah, like, I don't think that's even smart in the way that the world is moving. So I think everyone's coming to that realization that it is important to take up space in different ways and to find a way to bring it all home. And that's really been part of my journey is finding the similarities, just like we were talking about earlier, like when you're unlearning and how people get triggered, that exists across every space, you know? And so um, being plant-based or, you know, being on my spiritual journey and being an artist and a writer and all the storyteller, da 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 they all work together yeah. and just finding ways that I can take up space in all of them yeah. in one space, which is why this album is the I way that it say, is, yeah. because I wanted to be able to do the comedy and the yeah. music. And there was a time where people who I would work with didn't understand or see the vision and I would pivot trying to like be like, oh, maybe they're right. And maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't be goofy if I'm spiritual. How can those coexist, you know? But it's like, nah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at the place now where I see the beauty in being just totally authentic and taking up the space and just anything that brings me joy. Yeah, I love that. I, and I, I feel like I'm now there. Yeah. Uh, this, this podcast is that, and that's why I enjoy inviting people ask me all the time oh can i be on your podcast can i be on your podcast and i'm like me you want to be on my podcast <laughs> but I, I it's i'm very intentional about who i ask to come onto my podcast and the people that i do ask to come on to they are multi-hyphenate they do 
just about at, at least five different things that been, now a lot of people bring more, but I want people to share their expertise in many different, you know, facets and show people that it's okay to do more than just one thing because we, what's the, the quote of Jack of all trades is a master of none. I don't believe that. Well, the, the quote was longer than that. I think it, cause yeah, people stop it there thinking that it means that to be a Jack of all trades is a bad thing. Babe, what's the full quote? Cause you were the one who told me, what is it? Uh, yeah, look it up because there's more to that yeah. quote. Girl, that's a, if that's not a word right in itself, <laughs> they will just give you a headline oh, and then you don't do the deep dive. You thing. took the clickbait yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, but no, there, the, the whole quote actually, I hope he didn't, you yeah. found it. Okay, what is it, baby? A jack of all trades is a master. It's a master of the uh, oftentimes better than a master. Huh. That's the full yeah. quote, sis. Yeah. <laughs> so it it makes me like it makes me happy that I do do multiple things because first of all, I'm a trainer at a gym, right? One of my clients who I haven't makeup clients who I haven't done her makeup in like a year and a half she hit me up last night hey I need you on so-and-so day can you absolutely I can then I have somebody that wants me to creative direct a shoot and then when people call on me I am going to be ready no matter what it is so I'm making sure that I'm honing in and I'm crafting all of these things to the best of my ability so what is it? Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I'm saying, and I'm sure it helps you in being the artist that you are because you know how to do these things. You don't have to depend on a bunch of different people to do all yeah. the things that you can do. Like, Because yeah. I don't have to pay $125 to get my nails yeah, did. You're going to pop that bitch. <laughs> I sure am. Got the glue over there. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. um, so one of my favorite talents of yours i mean i love everything that you do but one of my favorite talents of yours is the impersonation as and i'm sure you get that a lot I do. like what <laughs> where did it come from like what it you're came. so good at it thank you <laughs> you know it really it's two things i think it's well, I know I was obsessed with the Spice Girls when I was a little kid. I mean, you know, I'm a millennial. Really, really well. Oh, no, we did Backstreet Boys. We did Boys. Backstreet okay, Boys. It but yes, yeah, Spice Girls, that's an inside joke. <laughs> but yeah, the, their accents, I was obsessed. Yeah. And so I would walk around the house, like talking like them all the time yeah. and seeing how I could manipulate my voice. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah. So it was just something that I enjoyed doing even when I was young. And then... Um, Singing, and you can relate to this, I'm sure, too, it's it's notes. Yep. So I think, and it's crazy because I swear, I saw this clip of Jamie Foxx discussing it I as well. I was thinking Jamie. But I literally had said that exact same thing before I saw that clip where he was saying how being a vocalist has helped him because it's just notes. Yeah. Like, I know I'm talking here. Beyonce talks down here. Yeah. It's just notes. Yeah. So just yeah. understanding and how to manipulate it is is really where it, where it comes from. You, you are so good at it. <laughs> like, Thank you. I think the very first time I saw you doing an impersonation, I was like, now hold the phone. <laughs> like, how is this girl like this good at it? It's you are fun. so, you are, oh, Jade, you are so good. Uh, like in like everything. I love the way you produce your content. Like, I love that you give people again you do so many things so you give people a little bit of everything and everything that you do in your impersonation clips you can tell that you came up with these stories and literally the clips of you from every different person that you are impersonating you're putting it together it's funny you're bringing in your comedy you're bringing in your storytelling you're bringing in your vocal ability you're bringing in like i see the vision in I'm just so glad that we have you. Like, oh man, thank <laughs> like, you. Like for real, it's it's really refreshing 
because again it's the 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 social media age is blank canvas what can we give them we what can we push out and then 15 minutes later they out the door let's find another one but bringing so much to the space you are creating longevity you are creating a legacy of girl yes yes <laughs> all, all, all of the all things I'm just like, <laughs> thank you so much no nah, it's it's good it's refreshing i like to ask people to give a random or funny story something that's like off the wall that maybe nobody would ever think or like i said something funny something interesting some type of some. Um, okay. I don't know if I've ever said this before out loud. Maybe I have. I mean, out loud I have. But I don't know if, <laughs> yeah. if I've said it in a public space. But I was definitely like, I don't know if the word is hypochondriac, but when I was a little kid, I had a very, very strong fear of death. I know that's kind of morbid, no, but it's funny. It gets yeah. funny. Okay. I promise y'all. <laughs> There's something funny about it. Okay. So yeah, I would always ask, like if, if my mom was spraying the 409 and the oh. thing and I, don't, I felt like, oh, did the drip of it get on there? Be like, oh my God, mom, I'm going to die. This happened, whatever. So I asked my dad like once, like there was this thing of Vaseline. Side note, y'all gotta stop using Vaseline. Yeah, it's it's petroleum up, yeah. jelly. It's petroleum. Petroleum is gas. Y'all putting it on your skin. Stop doing it. But we had it back then. Yeah. And I saw the jar and it looked appetizing. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I'll die if I eat this. I asked my dad, I said, dad, if I eat Vaseline, would I die? He's like, no. <laughs> That's the yeah. green light. I ate the jar of Vaseline. Well, not all of it, but yeah. enough. I did, I did, I did, I ate it. So, <laughs> uh, you can't leave no dot, dot, dot there, the ellipses. Did you tell anybody that you ate it? I am now. <laughs> I'm still here, I, do, I highly, I do not recommend. Do not do it, it probably, look, it might be the reason why I got eczema now. Oh I don't God, know, Jay. so do not do it. But yes, I did, I definitely ate some of that. Because I got the confirmation. Could you imagine if Google was around? When oh I was little? my God. Right. Because the answer to everything that you Google is death. <laughs> so I'm just and glad. That would have spooked you. I'm grateful to still be here. I don't know. Yeah, but I definitely said, oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. What did it, do you remember what it tastes like? Nothing? Much, no. Yeah. Oh wow. Do okay. Not, do not recommend. No, don't do that, kids. Please, Please don't. Children. And <laughs> parents keep the, the, if you don't buy the Vaseline. You don't buy the Vaseline. Yeah. We gotta do better. Get you some shea butter, yeah. some jojoba oil. Yeah, jojoba is good because jojoba oil, I'm also a licensed esthetician. Um, so I, I can't remember exactly how to say it, but jojoba oil and the sebum in the skin, so your oils in the skin, it weighs about the same amount. So if you have dry skin, jojoba oil is really good for your skin because it mimics the, you know, so jojoba oil, yeah. yeah. That's the J-O-J-O. You know, jo you know, Jojo, jo jo yeah. Uh -huh. jo <laughs> and I started recently using grapeseed oil mm. too, which has okay. been really nice. Yeah. yeah. So so no 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 petroleum Please. jelly, y'all. Like Please. stop it. No petroleum. And do yeah. not eat it. No. Oh wow, that was yeah. <laughs> That's um that was good. That was good. I, I also like to ask people, that is crazy. That is wild, okay? That was a really, really interesting child. Yeah. So many layers, so many more weird things, but yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll move on from that. What do you do to, to recharge? What do you do to, you do a lot. You travel a lot. You have many gifts, many talents. I'm sure you get exhausted. What is what what is that one thing that you or maybe not even one thing? What are the things that you do to make sure that you do have a full cup? Mm -hmm. Beautiful question. Thank you so much for asking. I really love yoga. Mm -hmm. I, lately, I haven't taken the time and it, it was a daily practice for me. Um, but I, every time I do it, I feel so present. Yeah the card yep. in my body and just not thinking about anything else and just moving it just it feels really great and I always feel so much better after I do it so yeah that's I needed to hear that for myself 
because maybe that's why I've been so cranky the past few days. I need to stretch and just move it out. Yeah, yeah it, it feels like a release. Yeah, because yeah. that was a thing, you know, like not being in church anymore, having to find my outlets. Yeah. I went through that space of like, how do I release? How do I fellowship? How do I recharge? And so that's definitely one of the things that has taken the place of some of those other practices from my past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl. So unfortunately, yeah. We are coming to the end of, uh, you know, a little slice. You, you put it in right. <laughs> but I like to ask people, um, what does green mean to you? Mm, it's abundance. I mean, Jade is the name that I've given myself, which is a shade of green. I actually, the first mixtape I ever put out was called Shades of Jade. Yeah. I love, girl, green is abundance. It's powerful. It's growth. It's, it's, yeah, all of those things. Green is a magical color. It's my favorite color. I mean, is it? <laughs> is no, it? sometimes. <laughs> a little bit more. Like... <laughs> well, yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate you so, so much. much. Oh, um, there's a camera right there for you. Tell people where to find you. Tell people what's going on. <laughs> that face. <laughs> Who was that, Troy? <laughs> Oh, great. How about Troy? Come on, Troy. Uh, but yeah, uh, of course, tell them where to get, where have I been, all, all the things. This is your time to talk directly to the camera. What is, yeah. <laughs> um, Jade Nova, J-A-D-E-N-O-V-A-H is where you can find me all the time, all the places. Um, Jade Nova official on TikTok but Jade Nova everywhere else. Um, and yes, you can stream my new album, Where Have I Been? Make sure you listen to it from beginning to end the first time. And then like she said, you can find the things that you vibe with and add them to your playlist. But yeah, Jade Nova, that's where I be. Yeah, 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 yeah. My favorites from the album are Trip, Affirm Me, First of all, can, can, can I also talk about the musicality on these songs? Please do. Listen, this wasn't even supposed to be happening, but I was gonna say it anyway. <laughs> um, where have I been? Um, let me see. Those are definitely top three. Mm -hmm. But Trip, Trip, I, that was one of the immersive, I was like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel the music moving through my, yeah, mm-hmm. But y'all did your big one. You did your big one. Okay, okay, okay. Where have I been? Streaming right now. Four for four. But yeah, thank y'all for tuning in to the season premiere of In the Green Room Podcast season three. Y'all know where to find me on Instagram, Brittany Shanae, B-R-I-T-T-A-N. E Y, get that E in there. Um, also, follow the podcast in the Green Room Podcast on Instagram. Follow us on YouTube where you can stream. Um, we're on Spotify, ITGR Podcast. ITGR Podcast on Spotify. Also, we got In the Green Room Weekend coming, 420 Weekend. Hey. It's going to be panels, a live podcast. You're going to be able to shop. You're going to be able to dance. You're going to be able to groove. You're going to be able to do all the things that we do. I'm teaming up with my family, Motion the Community. So, yeah, um, In the Green Room, we going up. Thank you again, Jay, for coming. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. This is a beautiful no space that you've created. I'm Thank really you. grateful. Thank you. But yeah, y'all come back next week, in the week after that, in the week after that, in the week after that. And I told y'all, again, I'm Brittany Shanae, your favorite podcaster, and it's the end of the episode, so I know I'm your favorite podcaster <laughs> now. All right, see y'all later. Bye. We didn't get up. <laughs> we didn't realize it. <laughs>